Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 and today I'm going to be giving you part 10 of what if Naruto was sent to a parallel multiverse. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was banished and now Kanoha needs him part 1 guys. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the Anime King family. And yeah, guys. And stay tuned for a brand new episode coming over Anime King, which I'll be posting later on for you guys to enjoy. So as usual, you already know what to do. Sit back, relax, and yeah, enjoy. So yeah, without further ado, would you to begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last spot we left off. As Naruto entered, as the first phase of the Chunin exams were about to begin, he saw several individuals as Naruto stepped inside. They tried to frighten him with their killer intent. As Naruto smiled, it was then that he released his own. As he did not focus on Mito and the others behind him, so they did not feel the effect. What they did saw though was the people drop into the ground. Some of them start to pass out from the sheer weight of power that Naruto was releasing. Shikaku was visibly afraid as Gara could feel it. This power was not normal in the slightest as it caught several individual eyes. As Mito told him to stop, as Naruto calmed himself down, Kabuto then came over to him as he was working with Urukai. As there was a list of people that Urukai wanted Naruto to kidnap and bring to her base in the forest of death. As Naruto was easy to oblige, seeing that she has given him a lot of information and proved that your partnership was not just one base. So he was gonna do that for her. The examiner then came in and it was none other than Ibiki. This exam was not a written one like the one in his time. It was a mental fortitude exam. As the group stepped forward, all of them went into a room as some of them could be heard screaming on the inside. When Naruto stepped in, he was placed under a genjutsu by Ibiki. He was not supposed to know that he was a Genjutsu but because he was so well, ridiculously powerful, his body kind of cancelled the effects. So he knew exactly what he was in, as he felt the effects taking control. As Naruto refused to give up any information, and he went as far as to release some of his power, Ibiki and the others were caught off guard and Ibiki was thrown and he burst through the room door, shocking everyone, as Naruto was allowed to exit the other part. The others then came out as they looked a bit solemn, as it had weighed a bit on them. Sahara, the most seen as she had, saw her father but her mind kept her in track and she moved on to the next round. Those who passed, they were to regather as a team. If you're one person, you could be one person. With that, they were supposed to go to the forest of death as Naruto saw uncle. Scrolls were hidden inside as they were supposed to find them. And with that, they enter inside. Upon entering, Luckily enough, they had Hanbei with them, and Mitu had Hinata with her, so the Byakuen was able to find the scrolls rather quickly. A team from the grass, Raizetsu, one of the person Urchimaru had list, appeared as Naruto released an overpower Ninjutsu, just to cause a distraction while he switched himself out to the clone, powerful enough to get here and go to the end of the tower, while the real Naruto headed off to have some fun and gather these people. It took him a while, but he ended up gathering all of them as he brought them down with his clothes to the lab, where he found Orca inside as he had many tables and many storage areas to store them. As they were all special one way and another, and she thanked him for his cooperation, as he asked her about a few things about the exam. With that he decided to take a walk. It turns out there was many more people to participate than he thought, as he hadn't seen most of them, some of them were even from Kiri, no bloodline purge, so Yager was still the Mizukagi as Naruto wonder 
if he would get here. For the finals, if his team somehow pass, as Naruto would ensure at least a few here in Ninja Pass. Meanwhile, as Mikoto enter a place, as it seemed to be rather secretive, inside waiting for her was none other than Minato. Her expression changed as she entered, as she just looked different in a way. As she came inside and saw Minato, she gave him a pleasant smile. Something was off. As the both of them turned toward the screen, as he asked the person who was holding the body cam if he was ready, it was none other than the person that go by the name X. As his face was hidden as usual, as he was in the forest of death, he was there to do a job. Nothing good it seems, as he told him yes, as Mikato told him, to go and complete his duty. So yeah guys, it was basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself, so this again is new. Episode We begin this episode in the secret location as Mikoto had a folder in her arm. As she investigated the folder, as she was looking it up and down, there were names, several names on it. There was another folder to the right. And these ones, she said. They are not important, said Minato. But those, as he pointed towards the folder, their abduction and annihilation are beneficial for Kanoha growth. Gonzo was a man that would do anything to ensure that Kanoha was always on top no matter what. He would go as far as to burn homes, innocent people. He wouldn't bat her eye. As long as Kanoha remained number one, anything, he would do anything. And that belief was also passed on to Minato as well, who was in the process of sending X to eliminate several worthy Jennings. That would, perhaps, go on to rise to something in the future. But Minato couldn't allow that. No, he couldn't allow that one bit. Kanoha must always remain on top. And if he had to root out the problem from the beginning, as his master told him, exterminate and rise. The more that fall, the more that Kanoha will rise. And he had stick with that ideology for years now. And he would never forget it. That is why the list and information was given off the X and his team that was in the forest of death as he was the leader of this unit to abduct several of the prospect Jennings from the other nations. They signed the waiver so if they died, there wasn't really a follow up between them and the other nations. Many of them would be taken because they possessed special abilities. Minoto did not know that Orkai was thinking the same thing. After all, she had Naruto kidnapped so many of them. But where does Mikato rule fit in this? As she sat there calmly, not disturbed one bit about this whole thing. As her and Minato had a plan, it seems from the beginning. She then looked towards another folder. On that folder, as a few names was there, one being Sahara, Naruto, Hanabi, and several other Jennings from Kanoha, and Jennings from other nations. Several from Kira as well. Some from Kumo, even some from the stone as well. They were planning something big, more than what they were doing right now. As she focused back on the screen, she saw X and his team, as the screen was split into several ways. It was big enough to see everything quite clearly. They each have on body cam. As X was moving fast, as he darted through the forest, as X came to a stop when he felt something strange, he had to leap away as the entire area, the forest of dead trees were thick. The reason why the animals in here were so large was because the place was saturated by Hushurama Senju Mokidon. In the past, it had absorbed the trees that he had created here. They had been fluctuated with his natural engine. And the creatures that here, they seemed to somehow became acclimated to it and grew in size and proportion. That is why they had giant spiders, giant ants and those things in here. And not to mention, the tigers, the bears, they were rather large. The trees in here was thick as well. So X was surprised what the hell caused that mass destruction. About 20 trees were obliterated violently. An onslaught of power resonated through the area. Minuto pressed the calm. X, what is that he said? I do not know. 
But I will find out. Minato did not suspect that any of the future chonins had power like this. As he looked at the massive destruction that that person caused, whoever it was. X moved through the trees as he arrived. His senses went haywire. As he was able to react before it happened, he twisted as several deadly wind blades tear through the bark of another massive tree. When X arrived to the area, he saw several ninjas. They were mutilated. Their bodies were sliced and crushed. Like someone had stomped on them repeatedly out of frustration. As the camera showed all of this, who is doing this? said Mikato. She did not look faced by all this slaughteration at all. She just looked confused. X said Minato. You and your team find out who is doing this. Said Minato as he looked at all the monsters that he saw. Bodies. As the teams were moving fast. There were a lot of them on each screen. Meanwhile, as Naruto was currently standing in a tree branch. As he watches several special anvils, that is what he called them. He forgot to ask Urkai what was their name, but they were a different group it seems. They could not see him, because that was not the real him. The real him was on the ground that was just a projection. As he could see through his projection eyes, but the others could not see his projection. As Naruto wondered what they were doing out here. Despite his sensor ability not being back at 100%, they were damn hard to find. It seems that they were perfectly trained in the art of suppressing themselves to feel like they weren't even there. It was incredible. These ninjas were surely well trained. He wondered if he could kill them before anyone else noticed. But there was a problem, there was cameras. Small cameras that his eyes picked up on. On the front of their clothing, they were sending feedback to someone else. As Naruto figured that it was his father. So if he were to show himself now, it wouldn't be good. He spat in anger at his fun being interrupted by these damn fools. But he was sure that their friend was out here. X his name was. As Naruto was dying to find out who the hell that was. And why did he feel so familiar to him? He wasn't sure what their main cause was out here. But for now, why not cause him a little bit of problem as Naruto emerged from underground. He had to focus to find them as they all were converging on one point. Seems like they were going to group up or something like that. So he might as well cause some chaos as Naruto clasped his hands together. As he closed his eyes, he then slowly opened his palm as a black small ball started to float above his palm. It then started to spin rapidly as water start to gather around it. The water start to be absorbed as Naruto pour water chakra inside it. The ball was like a black hole as it kept on feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding upon water chakra as Naruto finally came to a stop. He then sent out the small ball as it whipped through the air. X and his team regroup in the foliage of the forest. X was about to give them the order but before he could, he spotted something as he glanced up. As he saw a small ball in mid-ear just floating there. He pulled out his tonto. But the moment he did, the ball went white. And the water that came out of it was nothing normal. It was like a tsunami. Minato and the others were cut off as the feed started to sizzle. The tsunami slammed into the group. No matter how fast they were, they weren't able to beat it because it was like rain. It shot to the sky. Most of it coming down where X and his group was but it spread all over the forest. That was how much water it was. Every single inch of the forest was soaked in water. But most of the forest came down to where X and his group was wiping them out quite violently. As near to projection watch as he had to be close by for his projection to be stabilized because of his stupid weak body. He was still not strong enough. With that he left. He started off from tree branch to tree branch to make his way to find his team as he knew exactly where his clone was. He heard a ruckus 
It's gonna dry soon, don't worry. As he came to a stop, as he saw Gara, as he saw Tamar using a rag to wipe Gara's face and clean him up. As Naruto was surprised by the relationship, well, everything was different in this timeline. But they actually cared about him and he cared about them early on. But they seemed to dislike the village that he came from, especially their father giving the way they talk as Naruto has been watching them. But there was no talk of any invasion or anything like that. Well, given that Urkai was now in charge and she was not in charge of the sound, Arashi Fuma was. As Naruto decided to say hello, as he stepped out of the foliage, as Gara ears twitch a bit, as he turned, his wit sang, moving in front of his brother and sister. Why hello there, said Naruto. Nice weather we're having, he said. What do you want, said Gara. You know, this test is about killing one another. Well, not really, but you can say this. But I'm not here to fight, said Naruto as he saw Konkuro. Already pulled out his puppy and Tamari opened her fang. As Naruto raised his leg, as he stepped forward, as he was gone instantly, Gara felt a hand placed on his shoulder. Tamari and Konkuro were shocked. Gara's stand did not even react. As Naruto placed a hand on the back of Gara's throat, his sand twirled to attack, but unknowing if Naruto would just kill him, as Gar didn't know what it was but a feeling paralyzed him and his sand. Even Shikaku was unwilling to move the sand at all. Shikaku and Gar weren't on bad terms, actually. Shikaku kind of held the boy, as Naruto was surprised that Shikaku was different, as he wondered if the other tail beasts were different as well. Given that Shikaku always wanted to tell people. As Naruto's hand was on the back of Gara's neck, Tamari and Konkuro are free to move as Naruto turned, turning Gara with him. See? If I was here to fight, he would already be dead. But I'm not, he said, giving him a smile. Then what do you want? said Tamari. As she saw her brother hand shaking, as Gara was feeling something that none of them were feeling. Because of the simple touch connection between them, Gar was feeling something twisted and so dark that he's never felt before. Power that just overwhelmed him. He couldn't speak. He could not move. Gar was feeling what Naruto was truly capable of. Not his suppression body. What his truly godly form was capable of. The power that Naruto was itching to bring out. But he could not because his body would literally explode. And that forced Gar into submission. None of them were feeling that but Gar as he was trembling. Let go of him, said Konkuro. As Konkuro wondered why the sand was not moving and attacking this guy. And Gar seemed to be afraid. Konkuro has known his brother's entire life and he has never shown fear in front of an enemy before. Gar, said Tamara, she saw her brother on moving. What are you doing to him? As she looked towards Naruto's hand. I'm not doing anything, said Naruto. Then let go of him. I want something first. She narrowed her gaze on him. What do you want? Beg me to not kill him, said Naruto. What? You heard me. Beg me to not kill him. As she looked towards Konkuro. Go on your knees and beg me to not kill him, Naruto whisper once again. And I won't. She had her pride, but this was her baby brother that you were talking about. She dropped to one knee. Please. Don't kill him, she said. Gar had warned them to stay away from this guy because Shikaku felt something different inside of him. And even Shikaku was a bit shaken up about it. And now, his claims were right, saying that he was able to grab him so fast. And you, said Naruto. Konkuro bit down on his lip hard to draw blood as his fist clenched. He slowly moved his pinky finger as Naruto gripped on Gara's throat tightened. If you bring that puppet from underneath the earth, I'll tear his head off. Konkuro was shocked as he saw Naruto looking exactly where Karasu was. He had sent it underneath the earth when Naruto had turned his back to them. As he was surprised that Naruto knew where it was, he dropped down to one knee. Please, don't kill Gara, he said. As Naruto smiled, it's been a long time since people look at him with that amount of fear and he's missed it. He's missed a lot of things. His adult body. People fearing him. The worship of some of his 
religions. Given that he was basically a god amongst the elemental nation, some psychotic people had start to worship him as some kind of being that would destroy and rebuild the world in his own image. He liked it, but they were getting too clean so he annihilated them, and not to mention he missed sex. He missed that a lot, but this little idiot body of his just won't do. He need to return back to his state, as he was just so puny and immature, and he hasn't gone through puberty yet and that angered him, but his body was getting stronger fast. And he was sure by the time his power was back, he would grow back into his adult form really quickly. But he had to suffer being a virgin for the entire time. But this body was not him. He did have a religion of girls who threw themselves at him as they saw him as a god. And well, he did have Katsumi. As Naruto eyes twitch as he thought about her, something that he was trying not to do because he was getting more and more angry. He released Gar before he ended up ripping his neck off by accident. As Gar staggered forward as Timar grabbed him in her hole, Gar was still shaking a bit. Under the influence of Naruto power so long, it took him out of it. As Gar dropped as she held on to him, she glared up at Naruto who simply walked past her. As Konkuro got up to his feet shakingly, he raised his hand, only for Timar to grab it. Stop! Don't do it, she said. He looked down towards her in the state that Gar was in. As he stopped and kneeled down, hey Gar, you okay? It took several minutes for Gara to recover. Not even he could explain what he had sensed or what that feeling was. One moment he was there and next moment it was just so overwhelming. His body was forcefully shut down. And now he was awake and here. It was a lot. As Gara refocused on the situation, it was time to get the hell out of here. Meanwhile, as Naruto paused, I have to go, he said. Go? Worse, it's a hair. To the bathroom, said Naruto, as he jumped off in the bushes, leaving the two girls alone. They did not talk, despite their talks of being friends, because they were in the exam. They weren't that cozy to each other yet. As Naruto returned back a minute later, well, the real Naruto, who was drying his hands at a towel that were wet, the girls looked at him, as he pointed behind him. There's a stream over there, he said. As Naruto had dispelled his clone after calling it and swapped places with it. It was true, the real Naruto had fake a leak. So, with that, they continued their journey as they finally arrived at the massive tower. Arriving there, they were greeted with three slots, each of them pulled a scroll. As they saw up above, insert scroll here. They jammed the scroll inside. The scroll started to light up blue. As Chakra pulls out of it into the tower, the doors then open up as the group entered. Slam! The doors closed behind them in a loud slam. The group stood inside. Hanabi activator Byakkan. What do you see? said Naruto. Nothing. Absolutely nothing, she said. What do you mean nothing? Naruto asked. Somehow. My Byakkan is being blocked, she said, as she looked around, wondering if it was those damn seals. The Uzumakis, and their ceiling art was something different. There was a race they had to move to Kanoha, as the other nations wanted to wipe them out by themselves, because they were too powerful with the art of ceiling. As a massive stone column rose up, three to be exact, as the shape was a hand, as Naruto stepped forward confused, as he poked it, it did not react or do anything. What's going on? Said Sahara as she looked around. As a voice then spoke, Insert your hand. As the group was confused by this, Insert your hand now, the voice said once again. Well then, I guess we should follow, said Naruto. Sahara nodded as she placed her hand in, followed by Hanami. And then, by Naruto, the seals inside went off. An instant drain of their chakra. It tried to drain their chakra and knock them out. The two girls fell, as the seals that were used were rather powerful, but Naruto stood there, as he looked around nonchalant. As the place was silent as his chakra was still being drained, this thing could not knock him out by draining his chakra. It had taken quite a bit a lot from the girls, not enough to kill them but enough to knock them out. But him on the other hand, well he was different. 
he decided to fake it as he got his own chakra supply having so much control to do that as he collapsed someone walked out a moment later their face hidden by the darkness huh a strong one isn't he yeah but it's unnatural someone else said i mean he's still a jenny if he has so much chakra to stand up for a minute with those powerful seals he's quite something all right enough let's just prepare for the second phase the other voice said as he got to work no to place himself in a dreamlike state it seems like he was unconscious in the real world but he was fully coherent he could hear everything he see his eyes were closed he just couldn't see them as he pretended like he was unconscious he felt himself being taken as he was taken somewhere he was unsure where he was the next thing he knew water was splashed across his face hey wake up a frantic voice said as Nurta opened his eyes so did Hanabi and Sahara as he looked around confused so what the hell was going on what's happening Sahara asked as Hanabi rubbed her eyes look the exam was supposed to take place the third step but things got out of hand there were a few spies that were being hunted by an envoy as the man came closer as he saw that there was blood all over him and he was limping as he collapsed down to the ground as Naruto caught the man before his head hit the ground hard thanks the man said as he clutched onto a scroll the spies they're down here and where exactly are we said Naruto in the tunnels the next phase of the exam was about to begin but we were attacked while carrying you guys we had to leave you here to handle a spy but there's more than we estimate too much they're here for this as the man has thrown in his hand information that could lead to Kanoha demise go get the hell out of here take it and run and inform the Hokage go straight and then make a left it will take a while to get out of his tunnel go the man said as he started to cough up blood before his body went limp in Ruta's arm Hanabi checked his pulse he's gone is this real said Sahara or is this a part of the exam I'm not sure said Hanabi before she heard a gurgle as someone collapsed whatever it is we need to get the hell out of here the boat of them picked up themselves still tired as hell as they start to move along with Naruto who seems so nonchalant about all of this why are you so calm said Hanabi this is obviously a test said Naruto yeah perhaps it is said Sahara but what is the goal here as Naruto held on to the scroll don't know he said let's see what's inside wait but what if as she looked at him as he raised the eyebrow the person that gave this to us is dead so no one will know said Naruto as he opened up the scroll as he looked inside inside there was Kano had defenses wait this is Sahara was confused is this real this is Kanoha defenses Hanabi said as she looked at all the places to get in that were not guard but that means the exam is truly pausing and that means that we're really being hunted by as a kunai whipped past your face and embedded in the wall found you said a voice as Naruto turned as three ninjas emerge they weren't wearing any headband or village insignia hey hand that over would you and we can go on our merry way wouldn't want to cause a fuss and besides we can't stay here for too long before Nurt could say anything two more ninjas came from the opposite side and grabbed Hanabi and Sahara they were too weak to fight back as they were held on to as they struggled Akuna was placed at their throat all right kid enough playing around hand that over as Nurt held it up with fire tackling right in the center of his palm what if I burn it do that and they get it as he pressed the kuna up against their throat tighter so hand it over before your teammates die kid do you really want them to die at such a young age so it's either them or the village said Naruto exactly the man said now hand it over as he looked towards Naruto burning palm surprised that the kid mastered over a fire style like that he didn't even weave any hand signs why don't you tell your little friend to hand it over before we kill you? Burn it, Naruto. 
State Sahara. They're gonna use this against Kanoha. Don't give it to them. Yeah, destroy it, Hanabi said. <laughs> Selfless, are you two? But it does not matter, he won't burn it. After all, he loves his comrades. You're his friends, right? And if he burned that thing, you're as good as dead. And then he's next. But if you hand it over, we promised, we won't kill you. We're ninjas, not monsters. As Naruto started to laugh. Hey, what's so funny? This is fun, said Naruto. I mean, I thought this exam would be boring, but yes. This is quite innovative and different. And it's a lot of fun, said Naruto with a smirk. And, one thing though, this is gonna hurt. What? They couldn't get to finish that sentence as the kunai in your hand suddenly twisted as Naruto distorted the metal using its control over iron and broke into pieces. The group was then pulled over the girls. As the girls were brought onto the ground by some strange unseen force, as Naruto was doing all of this, as all the men were gathered in front of him, before he held out his hand, their faces started to grimace as they felt the force hit them, point blank rage. Before their bodies were thrown, it was violent. The entire hallway, the entire section was obliterated. As everything was blown away so badly, the entire hall shake. As Nurtidian looked up, as he raised his hand to the ceiling, boom! The entire tower shook as a gaping hole ripped out of the ground. As Nurtidian grabbed both girls by their waist and leaped out of the hole as he landed upstairs. Are you two okay? Nurtidian asked. Yeah, we're fine. I thought that thing took your chakra, said Hanabi. It tried to. But he couldn't take enough, said Nurtidian with a smile. A Sahara sigh. So, that wasn't real? Nah, I doubt it, said Naruto. But that guy, he died. Perhaps somehow he faked it, said Naruto. Sealing is a very wonderful thing, remember? Yeah, no doubt there, Hanabi said. As the two of them straightened out themselves, but they were still too tired, as Naruto could see that clearly, having their chakra drain like that. As it was always a choice to see, if they would break and gave over Kanoha's secrets. Clapping could be heard as Uncle emerged out of nowhere with a smile on her face. Hmm, you kids are something else. The others took the other route by not giving up the stroll and protecting Kanoha. Some of them tried to fight, but they were knocked out because they weren't powerful enough. But you guys wiped them all away and got yourself free along with the information. I'm impressed, Uncle said. You have just passed the second and third phase of the tuning exams. You guys look really out of it. Why don't I get somewhere for you guys to rest up? She said looking towards two girls, who nodded really appreciating that they were still exhausted. As she glanced over Naruto, you and the other hand seem perfectly fine. Because I am. I thought that your chakra was supposed to be drained, she asked. Let's just say you have a lot more chakra than that, said Naruto. Yeah, I heard. Wait, how did you hear? said Naruto. Oh, well, there has been talks about you being powerful and all, she said. As Naruto realized she was acting strange, but forget about that, she said, the smirk. What happened to you, Naruto she said. I've heard that you defeated Zabuza, and that your chakras increased. But despite that, said Naruto, the seals were still supposed to be able to take away my chakra. Yeah, she said. But as you said, you have a lot of chakra, but you said that you've heard, like you heard something special. What do you mean? Perhaps you talked to Menma. Of course not, she said. You know that we're not together anymore. And since the whole thing, we've stopped seeing each other completely. That I've heard, said Naruto. But Menma has been going on these diplomatic missions. And he has to have a time off where he rests not tell. I wonder if you will sneak up there to give him a booty call. As surprisingly a small blush came on her face. Uncle was different, given that she was not cursed by Urchmaru and, well, her attitude is a lot different in this. She was kind of sweet and blushing made her look even cute. And not to mention her clothing was different, 
she didn't dress like a how would he put it a whore that's the best way he could say it don't worry said Naruto you and my brother make a good couple you really think so not that I'm saying anything but you think so of course said Naruto you were meant to be after all not him and the Tayuga and don't worry said Naruto you didn't ruin anything the heart want what the heart wants yeah it really does she said she pat him on the head thanks she said for what I didn't see or hear anything said Naruto as she smiled at that she made a way off see a kid as Naruto started to look around as he was making his way he saw a group from Kiri as there were three boys a three boys team two of them had white hair and they looked so incredibly similar as Naruto realized one of them with the purple eyes it was Sigetsu he remembered him from his own time but the other one Naruto was unsure exactly who he was he had a rather large scroll on his back as Naruto wasn't sure who he was though and there was another blue hair boy beside them with dark eyes and glasses as he had a sword on his back a katana it seems Sugetsu also had a sword in his back as well but the other boy carried a scroll as Naruto walked over well 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 a team from Kiri huh as the boy that he did not know turned towards him who the hell are you he asks hmm well the name is Naruto said Naruto I wasn't expecting this attitude who are you who the hell wants to know are you stupid said Naruto as the boy I twitch I just said my name and I asked who are you said Naruto and why the hell should I tell you my name do you even deserve it after all you're just like the others a waste of space not true ninjas is that so said Naruto and who are you exactly almighty ninja Naruto asks I a main jutsu Hoshiki soon to be one of the elite said ninja swordsman of the miss and that name only belongs to the legend of legends so you should know that name remember and respect it because the next time you hear it you will fear it is that so said Naruto I'm gonna fear your stupid name what Sigetsu spoke hey don't you dare disrespect my brother like that your brother said Naruto as he looked at Sigetsu yeah you heard me my brother you wouldn't want us to be your enemy in this exam trust us we will make you regret it guys can we just not be quiet Kojiro this punk is pushing his luck said Minjutsu and it seems like you've made an enemy out of us an enemy said Naruto you amuse me child what who the hell do you think you are calling a child? Usually, I would crush you and grind you into peace, said Naruto. But here I am, unable to do that, because I'm not yet a god. What? As Naruto stepped forward up to him, you said that I'll regret making you an enemy, but I don't think so. You see, I'm kind of itching for a fight. So get to step forward as well. From the both of you, said Naruto. So, remember it good, the name is Naruto. If you want to come for me, come for me. And try your best to kill me with everything you got. Because if you don't, as Naruto had raised, as he left, Minjutsu Chen. But Minjutsu did not move as he just watched. His eyes directly glued onto Naruto's with such anger, like he was about to pop. But that made Naruto abuse. Come for me with everything you got. Let's see you try to kill me. Sigetsu grabbed Naruto's wrist as he pulled the sword off his back and placed the sword in Naruto's throat. Do you want to die before the exam even starts? He asks. Huh. I guess the bloody mix is still a dangerous village. You know about our village and yet you still push your luck. Do you really want to die that badly? Asks Minjutsu as he stepped close at Naruto and placed a finger on Naruto's skull because I can end your life like that as Naruto felt the 
water on his finger as he touched his skull. Did I give you permission to touch me, said Naruto. No, I don't think so. A force leapt from him and slammed into all three of them, even Kojiro who did nothing and didn't want to be a part of this, as they were all blown back. As Naruto stood there, Minjutsu picked himself up. What the hell was that? Next time, know your place. I'm allowed to touch vermin, but vermin is not allowed to touch me. Minjutsu pulled the scroll off his back, but Kojo came over and stopped this, he said. Look, he's gonna get it in the exam, but don't do anything rash here. You can be disqualified. As Minjutsu pushed Kojo's hand off his scroll, before he put it back on his back, you're lucky that he's right. But, count your days, Naruto. Because I'm gonna kill you. I want you to remember that clearly. From today on, count your days because we're gonna fight. I'm sure of it. You pushed your luck, and I'm gonna carve you into tiny little pieces and mail you back to your family, piece by piece. As Naruto chuckled happily. Well then, Minjutsu. I would like to see you try. And you too, Sigetsu. Brothers in arms. Brothers trying to kill me. I'm looking forward to the challenge. Please don't be a disappointment, said Naruto as he walked off. Leaving them fuming behind while mostly Minjutsu, who was pissed off at that. Kojuro sighed. Knowing Minjutsu this would happen a lot. But he couldn't help it. As that kid Naruto attitude clashed against his. And they would clash again soon. The rest of the team started to file in. As Mitu and her team arrived, Gar and his team arrived, and several other teams. Once all of it was said and done, Minato arrived. As Naruto glanced around, there wasn't a lot of them. Only the elites of the elites had made fear. As Naruto saw there was only strong ninjas. There was a village from each country, and that was good. As Naruto realized that him and Mitu and her team was the only team that Pass. Shikamar and the others seemed to fail. Kojiro was the only carry team here. There was a team from Kumo. As Nurt did not recognize them, there was a team from the stone as well. Gara team was the only sand team. And that was it. <laughs> there was less than he thought. Considering that there was so much in this exam, a lot of them did not make it well. He was the cause of that. When he had taken them and given them to Urkai. But you wonder if that was X mission as well. You wonder if Minato would send these people out to kill the different villages ninjas to make sure that they did not rise to become strong shinobis. That was a good tactic, dark and fun. As they were all gathered, I congratulate you all for making it this far. All of you have fight tooth and nail to make it to this last fighting stance. But I'm afraid today will not be the finals. What? said Minjutsu. Minato looked at the boy as the boy went silent. Under that look from the Hokage, despite not being from this village. Minato was a feared, powerful man. And people know when to stay in their place. Two weeks, that is the time you get to prepare. You have seen what the exam has to entail. But from this point on, you'll be fighting. Against one another. Perhaps your own comrade. In the finals, there will be three rounds, the first, the semi, and the finals. It will be a tournament match. The strongest will make it to the end. The weak will fall. Get yourself ready and prepared, because in two weeks time, the village will be open up. Your Kages will be here to view and see how strong their village has become, your daimyos. So this will be a good showing for each of your villages. So make sure not to disappoint. You're all dismissed, said Minato. As people started to leave after that, to get back home to put in some extra training in. As this exam has showed them that this place was dangerous and their opponents were going to be as well. But main due to stepped up Naruto, as he had this smile on his face, showing his sharp teeth. You hear that, brat? You're going to be fighting me in the exam. I told you, I just knew something this would happen. And you had to go and run that mode of yours. I know what I'll do. I'll take my best sword and I'll carve out your tongue. 
and I'll make you eat it right in front of everyone. How about that? Does that sound nice? Yes, it does, said Nuta agreeing with him. It sounds wonderful. You want to know what I will do? I realize that your body is basically made up of water. You are from a special clan after all. Minju too was shocked by that but he tried not let it show. As he wondered how the hell did he know. Just like your brother over there. As Nurta turns to get so glaring at him. So once. The exam comes around. I'm gonna hurt you bad. And I mean like really really bad. Until you turn into water and then. I'm gonna scoop you up and place you in a jar. And then I'm gonna freeze that jar. Until you're a block of ice. And then I'm gonna put you in the urine. And pee on you. Until you thaw. As Minjutsu was just getting more and more mad, the more Nurta speak, and Nurta's smile was pissing him off even more. Sugetsu, seeing his brother Ari, and hearing exactly what Nurta said, had enough. No one talks to my brother like that, and go on unscathed. As he raised his hand, as Nurta turned towards him, as Nurta's eyes settled on him, Sugetsu paused as he gulped. As he saw something a moment ago that he wasn't sure what it was but it caused him to stop his motion. As Nurt turned back towards Minjutsu and smiled. See you in two weeks he says he walked past him. You just wait blondie. I'm gonna remove that tongue and make you eat it. As Nurt laughed. I like to see you try he said. What was that all about said Mito. I was threatened. I had to show that I don't take kind of the threats. Mito gripped it by the shirt. Oh is that so she said, well then, you're gonna buy me some ramen, and if you don't, when you're sleeping, I'll tie you up, remove your clothes and hang you on top of the Hokage's tower for everyone to see, and humiliate you, how's that for a threat, now buy me ramen she said, as Nurta started to laugh, as that made her laugh as well, she did that so that they could ease attention, as the exam was hard, and it had, well, it was hard on her, but at least she was finally out of it and she lived through it. As she glanced towards soccer and was a bit shaken up by it all. As the tests were, yeah, difficult. As Nurta was the only one that seemed unaffected by it all. As they were posed with such difficult choices and they were almost killed. And the first phase when they saw their family, their family, their friends. For Mito it was Nurta, she saw Nurta had died right in front of her and it was scary that is when she saw him she was looking at him like she had saw a ghost because at first it felt so real until her mind adjusted though as Naruto was the only one that was unaffected because he simply did not care time skip Minma was laughing but he was muffling his laughter so that he would not wait their mother as Minma was at the door before he walked off from the glare that Naruto was giving him, Mito was asleep though. The thing was, it was the situation that they were in. Kushina had called them for something important. The moment they got in the room, she had grabbed onto the both of them. As she had checked to make sure that they were okay, and they did not have any mental damage from what happened, she said that they were growing up too fast. And she was going to prevent that, as she wanted them to return back to her little babies. He thought that she was joking until her chains came out and she grabbed them. Now he was wrapped around in chains as she had her arms around him. Him and Mito in a rather large bed that belonged to her and his father. Shit, Nurta thought. These chains were tough. He could get out but it would cause more effort than he thought. This stupid body was always deluding him. But as he looked towards the woman that was smiling as she looked so peaceful she was just nice so this is what it felt like to have a real mother considering that he never knew his in his time as he looked towards her it made him thought about Minato could Minato really be cheating on her with Mikato could that be the case if that was the case he was gonna kill Minato yeah as Naruto chuckled to himself what was he thinking was he doing this for her he was never a sentimental person. It wasn't like he was actually her son. He was a person from another timeline. He wasn't her real son. But yet as he looked at her holding on to him and refusing to let him go, 
he felt like he might as well do her one good favor, and that was to erase Minato. If what he thought was happening was right, yeah, he would do her that favor. Because after he decided to leave and become a god once again, she was gonna learn to hate him. After all, he was a monster and he knew that. He killed people for fun and he enjoyed doing it. And he does not like to be restrained or confined to one place. He liked to spread his wings and slaughter and murder. And that was enjoyable for him. In a few years, he was going to become a monster. A real corrupted, devilish monster. And he could not be bind or confined one place. So she would have to learn how to hate him. Because he was not her son. He was a god. Amongst men. He was not a mere human. As his eyes pulsed red, with his Renny Sharingan activating. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notifications they posted. Remember, share this to all of your friends in social media platform. But I'm moving on, see you guys soon. Peace.